Sutra. Beyond these, Ananda, are the five heavens of no return. For those who have completely cut off the nine categories of habits in the lower realms, neither suffering nor bliss exist, and there's no regression to the lower levels. All whose minds have achieved this renunciation dwell in these heavens together. Commentary Beyond these, Ananda, are the five heavens of no return. These upper five heavens are sometimes considered to be among the heavens of the fourth dhyana. However, these five are the dwelling places of sages and thus differ from the heavens of the first, second, third, and fourth dhyanas. Beings who have been certified to the fruition of Ahatshi preside in the five heavens of no return. For those who have completely cut off the nine categories of habits in the lower realms, neither suffering nor bliss exist, and there is no regression to the lower levels. The nine categories of habits refer to the first nine categories of the 81 categories of delusion of thoughts. We will not go into them in detail here. These beings do not have to return anywhere at this point. They will not regress to the lower levels. All whose minds have achieved this renunciation dwell in these heavens together. A multitude of beings reach this level of renunciation and dwell together in emptiness on a cloud that shelters the earth. Those who drown, they are sages who have reached the level of the five heavens of no return. Sutra Ananda, those who have put an end to suffering and bliss and who do not get involved in the contention between such thoughts are among those in the heaven of no affliction. Commentary They do not have thoughts of suffering and they do not have thoughts of bliss and so there is no involvement in the struggle between the two. Those who don't experience this battle between suffering and bliss are among those in the heaven of no affliction. The beings in this heaven don't have any afflictions at all. Sutra, those who isolate their practice, whether in movement or in restraint, investigating the restlessness of that involvement, are among those in the heaven of no heat. Commentary, those who isolate their practice, whether in movement or in restraint, investigating the baselessness of that involvement, are beings from the previous heaven who have progressed in their cultivation. In the first of the five heavens of no return, they did not get involved in contention between thoughts of suffering and bliss. This means that they were basically devoid of such thoughts. Although occasionally a little of that kind of thinking might arise, they might still get a little bit involved sometimes, but at this level, in the heaven of no heat, they look into the fact that such involvement lacks any foundation whatsoever until they reach the point where they simply cannot get, get cannot give rise to that kind of thought or have it in mind. For those beings, such thoughts never arise. They are among those in the heaven of no heat. They are cool and refreshed at all times. Sutra, those whose division is wonderfully perfect and clear, fill the realms of the ten directions as free of defining appearances, the seven destinies, and devoid of all dirt and filth. They are among those in the heaven of good view. Commentary Those whose vision is wonderfully perfect and clear view the realms of the ten directions as free of defiling appearances and devoid of all dirt and filth. Their vision is subtle and wonderful as well as being absolutely clear, not turbid or confused. Their view contains no defiling opinions. Their vision is said to be perfect and clear because it contains no defilement. All defiling dramas are extinguished. Ignorance and delusions 
as many as dust and sand have been cleared away. These heavenly beings are among those in the heaven of good will. Sutra, those whose subtle vision manifests as all their obstructions are refined away um, among those in the heaven of good manifestation. Commentary, everything in the, the beings in the previous heaven see is good now with the manifestation of this subtle vision. Everything they see is far superior to anything they have ever seen before. This heaven is a lot purer than the heavens already described. The word refined refers to the process of smelting, molding, and fashioning. It's like the firing done in a kiln or the sharpening done on an anvil. What is refined here is the mind and nature of a sage so that it becomes unobstructed and comfortable in every way. These are the beings who dwell in the heaven of good manifestation. Sutra Those who reach the ultimate subtle level come to the end of the nature of form and emptiness and either into the boundless realm. They are among those in the heaven of ultimate form. Commentary Those who reach the ultimately subtle level come to the end of the nature of form and emptiness. Ultimate has the meaning of epi epitome and all perfection. The subtle level refers to the detachment from desires. They reach the end of the nature of emptiness and the nature of form and enter into a boundless realm. They are among those in the heaven of ultimate form. They reach the ultimate extreme of the nature of form. Sutra, Ananda, those in the four dhyanas and even the rulers of the gods at those four levels can only pay their respects through having heard of the beings in the heavens of no return. They cannot know them or see them, just as the coarse people of the world cannot see the places where the Ahas abide in holy way places deep in the wide and mountains, mountainous areas. Commentary Ananda, those in the four dhyanas and even the rulers of the gods at those four levels can only pay their respects through having heard of the beings in the heavens of no return. The leaders of the gods in the heavens of the four dhyanas know about the sages dwelling in the five heavens of no return only through having heard about them. They cannot know them or see them themselves. In the same way, the cause people of the world cannot see the places where the Ahats abide in holy way places deep in the wide and mountainous areas. The Bodhimandas of the sages are in places where people do not go. Those who dwell in such places are great Ahas and great Bodhisattvas. Their presence is a supporting influence on the areas where they dwell. Ordinary people never see these holy beings. Although they all live in the same world, people cannot see the sages. So, the text likens the five heavens of no return to the sages in the remote way places. The gods in the heavens of the four dhyanas don't know where the sages reside. Sutra Ananda in these 18 heavens are those who practice only non-involvement and have not yet gotten rid of their ships, as well as those who have reached the level of no return. This is called the form realm. Commentary Ananda in these 18 heavens are those who practice only non-involvement and have not yet gotten rid of their ships. The 18 heavens are the three H of the first, second, and third dhyana, the four of the fourth dhyana, and the five heavens of no return. Together they comprise the heavens of the form realm. As to the practice of non-involvement, the beings in each of these heavens have their own particular causes and effects regarding cultivation. They have eliminated the coarser 
designs and transcended that realm, but they still have their own forms. The form realm also includes those who have reached the level of no return. However, because these heavens are inhabited by sages, they are really in a class by themselves. The text likens them to a house whose dwellings in the wise are unknown to the average person. This is called the form realm. Sutra, furthermore, Ananda, from this summit of the form realm, there are also two roads. Those who are intent upon renunciation discover wisdom. The light of their wisdom becomes perfect and penetrating, so that they can transcend the defiling realms, accomplish a hardship, and enter the Bodhisattva Vihago. They are among those called great ahas who have turned their minds around. Commentary. Furthermore, Ananda, from this summit of the form realm, there are also two roads. At this point, there is another fork in the road. Those who are intent upon renunciation discover wisdom. Once they practice renunciation, they can uncover their wisdom. The light of their wisdom becomes perfect and penetrating, so that there are no more obstructions. Then they can transcend the defiling realms. They can leave the triple realm by taking this fork in the road and accomplish a hardship. They attain the fruition of a hardship and enter the Bodhisattva Vihago. These kinds of living beings are among those called great ahas who have turned their minds around. That means they have turned from the small and come around to the great. They have turned from the small vehicle and they tend toward the great vehicle. Sutra, those who dwell in the thought of renunciation and who succeed in renunciation and rejection realize that their bodies are an obstacle. If they thereupon obliterate the obstacle and enter into emptiness, they are among those at the station of emptiness. Commentary, we have finished the discussion of the four dhyanas and now begin the explanation of the four stations of emptiness. Those who dwell in the thought of renunciation and who succeed in renunciation and rejection realize that their bodies are an obstacle. These gods accomplish renunciation of bliss and rejection of suffering. They now they know that physical bodies are an obstruction, and so if they thereupon obliterate the obstacle and enter into emptiness. They are among those at the station of emptiness. They don't want to be endured by anything, and so they contemplate their bodies as being just like empty space. In this way, they wipe out that obstacle. These beings then take the other road of the folk and enter the heaven of the station of boundless emptiness. Sutra. For those who have eradicated all obstacles, there is neither obstruction nor extinction, then there remains only the alaya consciousness and half of the subtle functions of the manas. These beings are among those at the station of Bali's consciousness. Commentary For those who have eradicated all obstacles, there is neither obstruction nor extinction. On the summit of the four Diana heavens, those who wished to progress upward felt that the body was an obstacle, so they obliterated the obstacle and entered emptiness. Now that they have advanced to the formless realm, there is no more hindrance of physical form. There is no obstacle, and so there is nothing to extinguish either. Then there remains only the, the alaya consciousness and half of the subtle functions of the manas. At this point, there is no body, only a consciousness. That consciousness is the alaya or a consciousness also known as the storehouse consciousness. The storehouse is actually the treasury of the first Kamwan, but at this point it has not yet completely returned to the nature of the treasury of the first Kamwan, and so it is still called a consciousness. 
every move you make, every word you speak, everything you do, and and culture in the course of every day is stored in this consciousness. For these beings, the alaya consciousness remains along with half of the subtle functions of the manas. The manas is the seventh consciousness, also known as the defiling consciousness. Transformations take place in this consciousness. It is true that we say ignorance arises in the eighth consciousness, but here it is extremely close to become the nature of the treasury of the first come one and to be free of defilement. It is only when the information stored in the eighth consciousness passes to the seventh consciousness that it becomes defiling. Now, however. Even the manas is functioning only at half its capacity, and so the defilement that remains is extremely subtle. These beings are among those at the station of boundless consciousness. They are born into the heaven at the station of boundless consciousness. Sutra. Those who have already done away with the emptiness and form eradicate the conscious mind as well. In the instinctive tranquility of the ten directions, there is nowhere at all to go. These beings are among those at the station of nothing whatsoever. Commentary: When they reach this level, there isn't anything at all. This is really a case of the house is destroyed, people are gone. It's hard to find words to express it. Everything is gone. Those who have already done away with emptiness and form now eradicate the conscious mind as well. The house is destroyed; the people are gone. In the station prior to this, there still was consciousness, but now consciousness is gone as well. It's hard to find words to express it. If you don't have a consciousness now, how? Are you going to talk? There's basically nothing that can be said anyway. In the extensive tranquility of the ten directions, there's nowhere at all to go. All the wounds of the ten directions throughout the entire Dharma realm have disappeared. A stillness pervades. There's nowhere to go, nor is there anywhere to come to. There's no coming and no going. These beings are among those at the station of nothing whatsoever. Also, there's nothing whatsoever. Nonetheless, the nature of these beings still remains. Their nature is the same as emptiness. Therefore, the gods at the station of nothing whatsoever still have a lifespan. How long is it? Sixty thousand great ends. Since the gods' lifespan and physical height increases. To such a vast proportions in the realms of form and formlessness, I haven't mentioned the figures. They are too huge. I decided to wait till the end and impress you with one gigantic number. If you want to know all the numbers between, you can look them up. This then is the second to last heaven, and the lifespan of the gods is sixty thousand great compass. We call it a lifespan, but actually these gods are in samadhi for that long. At the end of that time, their samadhi is destroyed, and then they once again transmigrate into the other realms of existence. It's not for sure what path of rebirth they will wind up in. These are the beings in the heaven of the station of nothing whatsoever.